In this video, we're just going to look at some of the questions which we have encountered on the nervous system. And remember, the only way to do well is for you guys to do all of the exam questions topic by topic and look up the official marking scheme. First question, what is the role of each of the following in the transmission of a nerve impulse? Dendrites, axons and cell body. So they want to know in the question, what do each of these do? What role do they play? And this is a motor neuron in the picture. The dendrites receive the impulse and they pass it towards the cell body. The axon receives the impulse from the cell body and the cell body makes the neurotransmitter chemicals and passes the impulse to an axon. Next question. Describe how a nerve impulse is transmitted across a synaptic cleft, so how it's passed from one neuron to the next. So in order to answer this question, you have to be familiar with this diagram and be able to label it appropriately. So a synapse is a region where two neurons meet and the space there is known as the synaptic cleft. And there is a presynaptic neuron and there's a postsynaptic neuron. These were the key points that you had to have in your answer, at least four. So the impulse arrives at the axon terminals, those neurotransmitter swellings, the synaptic knob it's referred to as. This triggers or stimulates the release of neurotransmitter chemicals into the synaptic cleft, into that space. These chemicals then diffuse across the synaptic cleft where they bind to receptors on that postsynaptic neuron. And the impulse starts in the next neuron, that postsynaptic neuron. Enzymes break down those neurotransmitter chemicals and the products are reabsorbed. The next question, an easy one. Name the type of particle whose movement in and out of neurons is an essential feature of nerve impulse transmission. Well, it's all about the movement of these charge particles. It's all to do with the movement of ions, those charge particles, and in particular sodium ions, but not on our course, just have to know ions. Next question. One of the roles of ions is the activation of neurotransmitters. Give an account of how neurotransmitters work. So they're discussing neurotransmitter chemicals. So it's a good idea to make sure at this stage that you know two examples. So acetylcholine and dopamine are two examples and know that the neurotransmitter chemicals are made in the cell body. So this is similar to another question we've answered just a few minutes ago, but there's a hint that this comes up a lot. So let's go through it. The neurotransmitter chemicals are released into the synaptic cleft and be at this stage saying to yourself, what triggered that? It was the nervous impulse arriving into the synaptic knob. So the neurotransmitter chemicals diffuse across the synaptic cleft, that gap, and they connect or bind with receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. The impulse is then started in this next neuron. The neurotransmitter chemicals are broken down by enzymes and the products of that breakdown are reabsorbed and more neurotransmitter chemicals are made. Next question. Draw a diagram of a motor neuron. So there's one there. We just have to label it. This is really important now. This is the importance of reading detail in your questions. Give one function of each of any two parts found only in neurons. So you have to pick two things that are only found on neurons and discuss their function. What do they do? Place an arrow on or near the diagram to indicate the direction of the impulse and name and state the role of any two types of neuron other than the motor neuron. So here's the fully labelled motor neuron. And these are the labels that you would be expected to know and to be able to place on your diagram. So you can see the dendrite, the cell body, the axon, the myelin sheath, which is made by those Schwann cells, the axon terminal and those neurotransmitter swellings. Now we have to put in the arrow going away from the cell body towards the neurotransmitter swellings. So at this stage, discuss the myelin sheath and the Schwann cell. They're easy. So the two neurons we're going to discuss are the sensory neurons sending the impulse towards the central nervous system and interneurons found within the central nervous system and passing those impulses from sensory to motor neurons. Next question. State one function for each of the following parts of the brain, the cerebrum, the hypothalamus, the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata. So let's start with the cerebrum and the easiest way in biology to remember things is to have a funny connection with it. So I always say the cerebrum and I'm brumming off down the road to do my driver's test and I need everything that the cerebrum controls to do well in that test. I need emotion, intelligence, language and your senses. So what about then your hypothalamus there in pink? Well, that's all to do with homeostasis maintaining those constant internal conditions or environment, such as thermal regulation, control of temperature, osmoregulation, control of water content. And it also has an endocrine function because it produces that antidiuretic hormone. 
So what about the medulla oblongata in yellow there? We encountered this in the chapter on breathing, so we know it controls breathing. It also controls other involuntary actions such as blood pressure and sneezing and all of those. Finally, the cerebellum, I always think of a bell and balance. So the cerebellum, balance and muscular coordination. Next question, what is a reflex action? It's an automatic involuntary response to a stimulus, dead easy. Give an example of a reflex action. Well, you could discuss pulling your hand away from a pin or a flame, but blinking and sneezing are examples. Next question, what's the benefit of a reflex action? It's protection. Next question, draw a labelled diagram to show the structures involved in a reflex arc. So what's a reflex arc? Well, this is showing the pathway of the nerves in a reflex action. So you have the receptor detecting the stimulus, the impulse is generated and it's passed into the spinal cord carried by a sensory neuron. That enters the spinal cord through the dorsal root at the back and then the impulse gets passed to an interneuron but at the same time it's also passed to another neur neuron that's sending it to the brain the impulse is then passed from that interneuron to a motor neuron and the motor neuron is exiting the spinal cord through the ventral root. Eventually the impulse will land or arrive at an effector which is usually a muscle. In this diagram it's most important that you have particular labels but an arrow to show the direction. Final question, name a disorder of the nervous system, give a possible cause and a means of prevention or treatment. The disease which we study is Parkinson's disease caused by a lack of dopamine, that neurotransmitter. Some suggest reasons such as exposure to hazardous chemicals like pesticides and a genetic link. It is a progressive disease but the treatment includes medication to mimic dopamine such as levodopa and physiotherapy to help with other muscular issues. So that was a selection of some questions which have been previously encountered on this topic, the nervous system. Remember, you have to do your own questions and sometimes, often, new questions which you haven't encountered will appear. And that's why it's important you understand the content. So best of luck with all the revision. Hope it's all going well. All of the icons used in this presentation are from the Noun Project. I'm a pro member, but I want to credit the Noun Project and the artists.